Before we actually look, go through the slides, I just want to give a, bit, a little bit of background. So uh, as um, Simon mentioned, uh, I'm in uh, SIRO Scientific Computing uh, in the applications team now. I was in the data publication, sorry, data processing team at the time that Simon and I were working on this uh, project. Um, so basically, the, the keyword aggregator really is a, uh, in summary, a web service, a web, web application and web service um, that allows search, keyword search across managed vocabularies, but also vocabularies, um, the vocabularies can include user-defined terms, and I'll demonstrate how that works uh, and discuss the motivations. So apart from the application and the web service, what we've done is to provide a sort of a, a demonstration widget, a jQuery-based widget that you can use to um, pretty much as is, but uh, it's really just intended to demonstrate how you might go about using the web service. So this work was actually originally carried out in the context of an e-research uh, project. Um, and the, as, as Simon said, Nick Carr is really the brains behind this. I'm more or less the code monkey who happens to understand um, enough about the domain to uh, be able to work in it. Um, and as, as Simon said, he and also Jonathan Yu provided some uh, invaluable, useful, uh, uh, invaluable input at the beginning of the project in particular. So a lot of the work that was done um, towards this was leading up to the Mod Sim 2015 conference. Then there was a, a, a hiatus of about a year, and then um, in the last half year, we've started to do some more work on it in the context of the data, um, uh, the, the data management uh, capability enhancement program, um, with the view to potentially looking at the use of this um, system um, in uh, the data access portal, but uh, that's to be determined yet. It's really just to, to try and understand whether we could get it to the point where it was mature enough to think about using it in that sort of context. And I'm going to provide a motivation uh, for um, the creation of this thing in the first place in the context of the data access portal. Uh, um, there is a, a data collection, a DAP collection, which I'll point to that you can you can go to to actually get the code. Um, so it's a slightly pre, uh, um, earlier version than where we are up to now and needs to be updated. Um, but there's also a bunch of links to publications uh, in, in, in relation to the keyword aggregator and um, just general technical information about it. So with that, I'll just launch into the slides. And there's only a handful of them. What I want to do then, after having motivated why we even want to do this, uh, is to then give a, a, a short demonstration of the aggregator, and hopefully that will uh, lead to some, some questions and conversation. Okay, so we're all familiar with the, the idea of, uh, of, of um, needing keywords of some sort in publications, whether we're talking about data publications or software, software publications or journal papers, conference papers, nothing new there. Uh, thinking about DAP in particular, you will come across a couple of different sorts of keywords. Uh, you can think of the fields of research as essentially a Control vocabulary. So this is from the ANZSRC fields of research, and you know essentially. Uh, David, are you showing a full screen? Because we're stuck. I'm just stuck on one slide um, with the title publication keywords. Is that what you oh, are okay. to show? Have you? Are, do you currently see one? Um, do you currently see one that says about this data collection and then fields of research and keywords? No, nope. seeing, not moving? The, gen uh, seeing the Janola and Caves one and it's not moving. Ah, oh, now, it, now, it's, now it's moved to publication keywords, now it's moved on down. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. All right, well, is that readable for everyone? or Because uh, I was in full screen mode. Because uh, if, if it is, I'll just stick with, uh, stick with this. Is that all right? Okay. Um, so, yeah, as, as, I, as, I was, as I was saying, what we see here are two different sorts of, um, of keywords, the fields of research and free, free text entry keywords, basically. Um, so in terms of how you would select those within, within the DAP, you know, you have um, essentially 
quite controlled drop down boxes that let you select particular fields of research. And that's pretty much the end of it. There's no sort of um, uh, wiggle room. Contrast that with free entry uh, keywords. That's pretty much um, as as you, you know, as it appears. You, you type in the text. You separate it with semicolons, and that's essentially how it appears in the um, the, the final collection. So one's very controlled. And one is completely free form, essentially. What would be nice now? Actually, what happens if I uh, try to? Oh, I think that's going to work. Okay. If I show this, can you guys see any animation? No, David. Okay, fine. Thank you. I'll just leave it like that then. So um, if you think about those keywords that I just showed you, uh, it would be nice instead of just typing in 3D to get some sort of uh, um, guidance as to, as to some, some possible keywords that might relate to 3D uh, concepts. Same thing for you know, LIDAR and uh, uh, SLAM and mapping and caves and whatnot. And so what this is intended to show, and the animation shows it a bit more clearly, but what this is intended to show is just the idea uh, that if you type 3D, you might get a list of things that might, might make you think about um, something more specific to enter rather than just 3D. Uh, likewise with mapping and, uh, and, and SLAM and LiDAR and, and, and whatnot. But the question mark there above Janelle and Caves and Zebedee is just to point out that there are always going to be, no matter what uh, vast set of vocabularies or keywords uh, resources you might have, um, uh, you, there's always going to be the situation where there will be uh, keywords that just don't fit or that aren't aren't catered for. So how do you how do you deal with that basically? Um, this this is where we come across the idea of folksonomies, and so the idea there is that you might enter the word Zebedee, and then essentially get no results and be prompted for a description, so that you can then add that or include that uh, in in uh, future searches essentially. So this is just Showing from left to right and then down and across to the to back to the left again how how that might happen, and that likewise for Janolan caves, uh, there may not be anything uh, anything specific for that, so you can enter that. But the question then becomes: Well, if you enter those sorts of folksonomy based um, vocabulary keywords, if someone searches for them in the future, should they appear? at the top of the list, should they appear at the bottom of the list? And I guess the idea is that since they're not based upon, um, you know, a formal vocabulary that a group has decided or agreed upon, that they should be last in the list of, um, uh, of search results. So in summary, what we've, what we've done is, is, as I said, created this web, web uh, application and web service that allows search across vocabularies, including a, vo a folksonomy. And uh, these are essentially isolated in named graphs, um, the idea of named graphs. And the idea is that you may well have conflicts between them, but you need to still be able to allow for the possibility of um, of uh, all these vocabularies living together happily. And um, then, as I said, we expose it via a demonstration with it, widget. I'll also show you what, what's happening behind in terms of uh, a regular uh, web service response that you, you would get um, in terms of JSON. And then just briefly, the, the architecture is just to say, well, we've got a web, web service that's up, that uses particular um, implementation frameworks and uh, we have uh, a, a database for storing uh, certain statistics and then a Sparkle endpoint that talks to an RDF based triple store which has GOS vocabularies. 
All right, so before I move on to a demonstration, any questions or should I just go straight to the demonstration? Hi, David, Nick here, I've just appeared. Hey, Nick, how are you? That's good, um, you, can, you can deal with any gnarly questions. Go, David. go, go, to, go to the demonstration, <laughs> thank you, David, and then it becomes real for everyone, of course. Very good. Okay, so this is the web service, sorry, this is the keyword aggregator um, uh, top level page. Uh, now, I'm showing here instance of um, uh, a containerized instance uh, that's based on, on Docker. This was one of the things that we did in the work earlier, earlier this year. Uh, we talked about it a couple of years ago, but didn't actually end up doing that. So uh, I'm happy to talk about that if, uh, if there's any interest. So what you see at the top level here is the ability to get to a widget. Uh, the widget that I mentioned, uh, some information about the vocabularies that are in this particular instance of the keyword aggregator, and a link to an example web service um, um, API call. So what I want to do is talk about the widget first, because that's really, I guess, the, mm, the simplest way of seeing what happens here. That was an interesting noise. Um, okay, so if I type um, fish, for, for example, I'll get a, a list and the number of results that you get back from a search is uh, configurable. Um, and yeah, so essentially we can say, all right, well, I'm going to choose one of these and then you now if I start trying to use some of the examples that I had in the, um, okay, there's nothing other vocabularies has that right now. Um, so mapping, for example, might decide that. Now, David, you're still showing the, the PowerPoint. Really? Ah, yeah. okay. I think you. I think you might be showing your wrong screen, David. Yeah, I am indeed. Sorry, I'm not. I haven't used too much. Um, okay, so I need to just find that. Thanks for that. Um, actually, I'm just going to share the screen. Might be easier. That's what I should have done. Okay, can you see the web page now? Just waiting. No, still seeing your PowerPoint and control panel. Okay, I'm just going to stop and reshare again. That's oh. now. Now we're seeing a web page. Okay, sorry about that, guys. No. So um, yes, so again, I'll just very briefly go back. So this is the top level page. Uh, I'm going to focus initially on the widget. And so if I type in a term here, such as map, similar to sort of, uh, to the sort of example we saw in the slides, I might decide that digital soil mapping is uh, the one that I want and then uh, we're looking at things like LIDAR. So again, uh, the initial, it may still make sense to just say, no, I just want to talk about LIDAR in uh, general, but someone seeing a set of results like this might determine, might, might sort of determine that actually is better to have something more specific for the keyword. Um, uh, uh, SLAM was another one that we were looking at. And this is good because, you know, the, the, the person uh, trying out the keyword here might decide that actually the audience, uh, the, the people who, who may be looking at the, the data collection might be better served by having uh, not an acronym, but the, the, the acronym expanded and so on. So we can keep doing this and, and obviously we get to the point where we start looking at um, uh, caves and okay there was in particular uh, the Janolan caves was one of the keywords that was entered by the depositors and you wouldn't expect really to see um, a specific keyword in uh, general vocabulary for that so we now see the add link here and so if I, if I click the add link I can I can enter a description such as New South Wales cave system or something like that and then that will be added to the set of vocabularies in uh, an isolated vocabulary which corresponds to this folksonomy idea 
So then if I was to later search for that um, and type cave, this time I get the other two that we saw before, but the specific jawline caves keyword as well. But as I said, it appears at the bottom because we're essentially assigning this a lower weighting. And that's something that I haven't specifically talked about yet and I can answer questions about the kind of uh, search that's being done here but it's essentially a, a weighting based upon where the keyword appears in the vocabulary and also what vocabulary. So we can accept that. Um, and yeah, I think that that's really the, the main thing to show. I also just wanna show the, um, the web service briefly and then make some closing remarks. You need to move along, David. We're yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Righto. Okay. Um, so then briefly just returning to the top level. This is just to show what a JSON response for a, a web service um, uh, based search would actually look like and I guess uh, and again we can examine this in more detail and discussion if you like but there's a, there's a rich amount of information in here that we're not even uh, showing in any way uh, ex except for the, uh, the text based values in the um, in the widget. So the final thing just to say is that there is uh, as I mentioned a, a DAP collection and you can uh, just if you just go to the data access portal and type vocabulary, you'll you'll or keyword aggregator, you'll uh, you'll come across it. There are links out to the Bitbucket repository uh, where the code is, and uh, some publications relating to the work, as well as a presentation that actually has the slides that you saw before, but um, um, substantially more based on the ModSim 2015 talk. That's it.